Hello folks and welcome back to Medieval Total War. I am Kana Step and this is going to be part 55 of my early campaign where I'm playing as Aragon. And I'm still working on fixing my economy here. I am making a lot of money, but a lot of that is tied up into the provinces that I have in the Levant. Uh, primarily here in Tripoli is making me a ton of money. 4,000, over 4,000 florins is coming from Tripoli and I do not intend on keeping this. I do want to give it to the Egyptians. I know I'm just being kind of stubborn here, but... I do want to hang on to just, you know, Antioch and the islands and Greece and just try to maintain the, you know, the historical kind of Aragon to an extent. I know they didn't, I don't think they had Crete or Rhodes or Cyprus, but yes, in any case. Um, what is frustrating here is that, so I don't want to just simply retreat from these provinces because there's a pretty good chance that Egypt would go to war with me to take these back, even if I'm, you know, trying to give it to them. They probably would not wait for these provinces to go rebel before they take them because they have canceled their alliance with us because I have gone to war, or should I say the Almohads have gone to war with me. Again, not intentionally. They were just, you know, taking a province off of me that I was giving to them, but they did not wait for it to go rebel first. And my attempts to get a ceasefire from them have been falling on deaf ears. So I can keep trying, but... Honestly, I'm probably just going to destroy them this turn, so I guess there's no really point in, in trying to do this, because... Yeah, also, their Khalifa is going to die soon. He's 58 years old, so I could wait for him to die, but I don't want to. I'd rather just get this over with now. He could end up living into his 60s. Who knows? He doesn't have any sons, though, so once he's dead, I wouldn't be making money off of trading with him anyway, because these would all go rubble again, so... Getting rid of the Alma head seems like a pretty, pretty much like a thing I have to do at this point. And I mean, that is if I want the Egyptians to take over all of North Africa, which I do. I would like them to do that because then I can trade with them. And then with the Alma heads gone and the Egyptians, uh, you know, whole purpose of not getting an alliance with me being gone. Hopefully I can get the alliance again, just so that I can sort of have a little bit of a guarantee that they won't attack me here in Palestine while I'm trying to give them this territory because that fear of losing some influence would hopefully be too great for them. Uh, in addition to that, the fact that I saved their ass, you know, their their sultan was trapped in, or the caliph was trapped in here in Arabia and I came in here and saved him. You would think that he would, uh, you know, owe me here, but if I lose Egypt as a trade partner, that would be really devastating to me because that'd be quite a few ports that I would not be trading with and I would not be able to get an automatic ceasefire with them because... I'm in a province that borders a few of their provinces, so getting an auto ceasefire would not be an option either. It would just be really, really tough for me to convince them not to be at war with me, which would be um really unfortunate. So just getting rid of the Alma heads in just like one big turn or two two turns technically, because they will retreat to their castles and then I can attack their castles and I get rid of them them that way. The fact that there is just a keep here in Algeria and a fort in Cyrenasia means that I should be able to take these armies with no problem. And the armies themselves are really, really weak. Archers, guns, mostly archers and guns. Yeah. And I do have some healthy armies here in Wessex that these are the healthier ones. These are the ones that I'm sending back to get retrained. But hey, you know, four, pretty much four full stacks that are ready to go here, including this badass six-star general, Lord Sanchez, my master of the king's horses. Yeah, he's ready to go. I mean, natural leader plus two morale. And uh, yeah, that's that's about it. Well, I mean, yeah, plus two dread murderous temper. But yeah, he's, he's good. This guy's good. And uh, he will go in there. I got do I have anyone else. Just a couple one star generals. Yeah, that's, that's too bad. But it's going to be enough to get the job done in North Africa, I think. And with them wiped out, hopefully the Egyptians can come in and start taking some of these territories. And I might have to come in here and take this, take out this rebel army that's sitting here in Sinai as well, because it's kind of blocking the Egyptian armies off. I mean, I say that there's really not much here for the Egyptians here in Arabia. And they don't have any boats in the water, so they can't move forces from these provinces down here, which is also too bad. But I think if, if I can just wipe out these armies, I still feel like this Egyptian army here would hopefully be enough to at least take a couple of provinces. 
Hopefully. And with a little bit more money, you know, for instance, if they're trading with me through Cyrenasia, uh, even though Cyrenasia does not get, they don't have any trade goods, they can still make an import uh, tax, like income, which isn't as much, but it's still something. I, I believe that's how that works, at least, so... Yeah, they could make some money off of Cyrenasia, even though Cyrenasia is just like dirt poor. Still, it's it's something, you know. And yeah, Tunisia's better. Tunisia's making 649. That's on very high taxes, but still. You know, that would be that would give them the potential to at least, you know, train up some peasants so that they can hold these territories in North Africa. It's worth going for, it really is. And I am giving up Constantinople. Hopefully this also goes rebel very quickly. It's sitting at 68% loyalty. Can I, you know what, actually, I should do this. I should destroy the watchtower because that gives a loyalty bonus. Does it show right away? Yeah, down to 48%, just like that. And then the town watch, the militia building also gives a uh, loyalty bonus as well. So let's get rid of this. And what's that bring it down to? 38%, yeah. So hopefully this goes rebel right away before the Mongols attack. Yeah. Hmm. You know what? Maybe I should put some armies back in here just to kind of dissuade the Mongols from attacking. Yeah. But then I... God damn No, that just... That doesn't work. <laughs> right. <laughs> that just... Raises the loyalty again, yeah. So I have to just kind of leave it like this, and hopefully no one attacks me. Uh, hmm. Yeah, if I could get an alliance with the Mongols and try to get them to not... Man, they're going to attack, aren't they? They would. Like, there's nothing... Constantinople's a really good province, so, like, they should attack me. Hmm. Maybe leave these guys here and... Try to get an alliance with the Mongols. I have a bishop here. Let's talk to this guy. Yeah, let's just try to get an alliance with the Mongols so that we can try to give them Constantinople without them uh, going, to, going to war with us. Because like Egypt, this is another, you know, faction that I'm trading with in quite a few places here. You know, Moldavia, Crimea, Georgia, at least a few of them. So. If I ended up going to war with them, that would just be another blow, right? That To my economy, that'd be really tough. Yeah, Lithuania as well as a port. So, yeah, damn, it's tough. I should hang on to this until I get that, get, get an alliance, hopefully. And same thing with the Egyptians. I might have to, like, just clear this all out. I might have to come in here, clear out the Alma heads, clear out the rebels in Sinai, um... Clear out the rebels in Syria just so that the Egyptians can link their territories together. You know, maybe even clear out the rebels here in Nicaea so that Egypt could take this. Egypt or Mongols, you know, whoever, right? Yeah, there's a, there's some work to be done. Over here, the Swiss are making some progress, which has given me some hope. Yeah. Yeah, the Swiss are taking some territories. They can come down here and take Aquitaine. I could trade with them there. That'd be nice. But I might have to come up here to Flanders and destroy this army, because that's a decent looking stack. Same thing here with uh, this force here in Friesland. Even Denmark. This is so sad, because the Germans, like, <laughs> barely have anything. The rebels also have barely have anything, but still, like, this, these rebel forces could beat this German force. Which is too bad. Denmark would be nice. It's not making too much money, but it's still something. And yeah, take out the rebels in Pomerania, Prussia, uh, Livonia, and uh, Finland would also be options as well. Maybe not Livonia, there's no port here, but at least there's other places. Prussia, Pomerania, Denmark, Sweden. Sweden has a port as well. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely options. There's definitely options. So, I'm going to keep cracking at it. I still, Like I said, I have these armies ready to go. They can attack immediately. And then down here in Spain, I'm just kind of using all this time to retrain all of the units that have been damaged uh, during that, you know, that initial blitz against the rebels. 
The rebels have decided to retreat from Cyrenasia, so they will be going to Algeria, I suppose? Interesting. And then they're retreating from Tunisia as well. Oh no, yeah, Tunisia. Okay, so... That's interesting. So those armies that retreated from Cyrenasia should have nowhere to go. Unless they can just retreat down the line. I don't think that's how that works, though. We will be getting a battle here in... This is Algeria, right? 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 <laughs> I think, yeah. And uh, this was this is against the Khalifa himself. It's a very poor army. In fact, I'm kind of surprised they're not retreating from this battle. Because I thought they had a stronger chance in the other battles. But yeah, in this one, I don't think so. And I have a pretty scrappy force itself. I mean, I w am fighting in the desert with some heavy... Heavily armored units, so there, there's that being a problem, and I do only have a one-star general, but the Khalifa is a zero-star general, so I should be able to get this one done here. I brought some artillery. Let's see if it's in range. My culverin should be in range. Yeah, shoot at the Gulan bodyguards immediately. And are you in range as well? Oh, yes. Yes, you are. I wonder if this is going to draw the enemy towards me, actually. That'd be kind of cool. I don't think my artillery has hit a single target yet. Turns out they're way, way better at shooting fortifications than they are at shooting personnel. Look at that, just way off. Look at that, so bad. Oh dear. They repositioned a little bit. I can't tell if they're going to be moving. Looks like I, made, I got a target. Yeah, looks like I might have gotten a couple archers there. And maybe that's why they were repositioning. Oh, 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 oh. Did I get someone on the bounce? Doesn't look like it. Looks like it just ate right into the sand dune there. Looks like we are getting some hits in here. Yeah, looks like uh, we have killed a few of the Khalifa's unit himself. And we've taken down some of these... Uh, oh, oh, what about that shot? Oh, hey. Got some rounds coming in. Might have taken out... Yeah, took out a couple of archers there. And they are moving their cav up now. So their cav will be just getting shot by my arbalesters right here. And yeah, my guns not are they're not in a great position here. Ooh, wow, okay, that's <laughs> that's some danger close fire right there. Oh, huh, let's see if I can get my guns in a sort of a better position position here. With my cav up to support. In fact, I can kind of bring my genetes down here. Looks like we might be taking a charge in the center. Jesus, that is some that's some close fire. And let's get my left flank moving into position where they can better help. And are we shooting yet with our guns? Looks like they're not quite in range. So let's make sure that they are on skirmish. There we go. Yeah, we actually got got a couple kills there. Yep, they're, run, they're running away. That's perfect. Let's put my guns back on hold position. See if we can get another shot in here. Can we get a shot or no? Run away? Run, it, run away it is. So let's support here. And yeah, we will be taking a charge with my... Swordsman, which is not ideal, but you know what? Now we have chivalric sergeants shooting. Let's make sure that our guns are shooting their archers so that we don't take any friendly fire here. It looks like their Ghulam calves just getting chewed up. Yeah, actually, let's have my guns shoot at their Berber camels. Yeah, that, that feels a little bit better. And there we go. So the king is running away. There's three left in his unit. Looks like he is stuck in right there. So let's push up with... Hmm. Hang on, just try to turn around. And militia sergeants are right here if they want to get a little bit funky. And we got some knights and some chivalric knights as well that, think that can come down. And let's just push up with our center. The there we go, yeah. He, he is now... now He's now taken, and that's that's it for the Almheads right there. You know, we can just kind of go full ham on them. So let's just kind of send... Yep, they're running away. I can send my genetes to run down these archers. Uh, my general can just kind of hang out. And let's see, on this side... Let's make sure they're running down these guys. And that's going to be it for the Almaheads, I think. Easy peasy. I'm pretty sure that the Almaheads cannot afford to ransom back their king, but just to make sure he's dead. There we go. That should be it for the Almaheads. They should have accepted peace, I'm telling you. So yeah, we got, we got back all these territories. We did lose Morocco to the rebels. Uh, perfect. That's what I wanted. Ransom refused. Uh, geez, yeah, we captured all those men because they didn't have any provinces to run away to. Bandits and Mercia, you can have it. Unrest and Mercia, please do. Faction eliminated. Almohads, yes. Perfect. General promoted. Lord Enriquez. Yeah, you get it, man. 
Inquisition, Tripoli, that's that's where it belongs. And yes, all right. So the Egyptians still said no, but now that the Almohads are gone, hopefully the Egyptians will say yes. Because yeah, I don't think that was calculated in time yet. Let's see, Lord Family Favorites, yeah. This is what happens when your kingdom grows too large. You end up with governors getting traits like this. Family favorites. So while pretending that he chooses servants and aides by merit, he favors relatives on every possible occasion. Their poor abilities are less important to him than kinship. Minus 20% agricultural output and minus 10% trade income. That's huge. That's so big. That's so big. You know, that's, that's why... Um, that's one of the reasons why I like playing the Glorious Achievements mode, is because you don't really have to deal with that shit as much. Lord Enriquez, scant mercy, that's what you get for killing prisoners on the battlefield, but plus one dread, not bad. I'm pretty sure this is one that will get bad though eventually if you keep doing it. The men will lose morale. He will get like one of those traits where, yeah, it's like minus one morale or minus two morale or something. Because the men are pissed off because they're not making that ransom money, which is a really cool trait. It's a really cool thing that like it goes in that direction, right? Like you can do it once and the men are like, all right, fine. Like we're, we're with it, you know, but then you do it twice and they're like, okay, well, come on. Like we're doing, we're not doing this for free. You know, like this is how we make our, make a living and they're going to get pissed off at you, which is really interesting. I think that's a really cool, cool uh, trait line there. So. Oh, that's good. I will just be leaving all of this now to the Egyptians. Hopefully, is there anything like, like, would this stop the Egyptians or do I need to go in here and take this? I am almost tempted to take this just because, uh, I mean, you know, like a Berber camel and two archers. I don't know. That could hurt a little bit. The Egyptians do have a lot of cav though. Including some camel units that can counter that Berber camel. That's like it. The rest of it's, you know, artillery. So I don't think I really have to take that. I could go right into Sine. Um, But I do, yeah, right. I do want to get that, uh, that alliance. Yeah. I do want to get that alliance before I give up these territories. Just so that I don't get a war with the Egyptians for, for them taking this back. Is that too much to ask for? So I guess we'll hang out. How long is this going to... Yeah, two turns. Okay, it'll, it'll be gone by the time I get that alliance, I suppose. And here, so we do have Tunisia. So I can assign someone a governorship while I'm here. There you go. And how long is this going to last? This is going to... This is not going to fall without direct assault. Okay. Okie doke. But I don't need to stay here, actually. Yeah, both of these provinces. I don't have to stay here. Because I'm not bordering the Egyptians, so it doesn't matter. So yeah, let's just bugger off, I suppose. Bugger off! Let's go. Uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just go home. I'll go home with these armies in Tunisia and Algeria. Or I can send the Tunisian army. I can send both of them actually off to Sine. Yeah. Just take this right now. Take this province and... Uh, hopefully very soon I can give it, give it away, you know, give it back. Jumping on into this battle here in Sinai, I am, I am wishing that I brought my six-star general from Cyrenasia instead of leaving him there to, you know, establish that siege. I probably should have brought him with because I just have a two-star general going up against a three-star, which is not, not ideal. Also, again, in the desert with my heavy armor, also not ideal. And this is a kind of a decent skirmishing desert army. You know, there's some Mamluk horse archers right here, which are good. This is a good horse archer unit. And the Gulen bodyguards, like this is a, you know, that's that's solid. There's only 20 men in it, but it's a decent heavy cav unit. Some archers as well, but it's mostly just a skirmish calf. Some Faris as well. Another good uh, horse archer unit. So I'm going to be countering. I actually do want to bring the artillery pieces. I kind of liked the way that they worked in the last battle. So if I can sort of control and dictate the uh, the pace of this battle by using the artillery to keep their horse skirmishers honest, that's going to be my play there. And uh, going very light on infantry, just kind of bringing some, you know, a lot of cav, some turcopoles, you know, my own horse archers, some genetes, and then my feudal 
knights just because of their light armor. Hopefully they can fare a little bit better here in the desert. So without further ado, let's get into it. Yeah, this is definitely a bigger army. So I do have my artillery split up in this case. I got my culverin on that side and then I do have my demi culverin on this side. Hopefully try to get them a little bit protected by the village. And let's see, what can we shoot at? Yeah, let's shoot at the general on that. And let's actually see if we can touch the general. Yeah, good range on these on these cannons, at least. I wonder if shooting at units in front is a better idea. That way, if they miss, they might still hit something behind them. Let's try that. And let's bring... I have some lighter cav on either side as well. Now they're taking some hits, and they're getting a little bit nervous here. You can see they're trying to reposition to see if that's going to help them out very much. And I don't think it's going to really protect them from getting shelled by artillery because, yeah, they might be on a hill, but my guns, uh, even though they're not super accurate, they are, they are getting some shots in there, in there, and uh, you are seeing some dead horses pile up on that hill. So I'll make sure that my artillery keeps just just aim dead center. You know, go right right for the middle of that pile. And I'll keep pushing up because I've, my infantry, it's pretty spiky, you know, there's not a lot of it, but Pavis Arbluster is being supported by two units of pikemen. Yeah, it's not, it's not bad. It really is not bad. Then on this side, I got my feudal knights and my turkopoles. They can kind of go wide. And then I can also have my chivalric knights on that side. And yeah, they're kind of pushing... Let's see, yeah, they're kind of kind of pushing on my um, my right flank a little bit. So maybe let's push up a little bit harder and faster. Because I don't want them to roll me up on that side. That's not what I want to happen. Yeah, Gulam Cav, Armenian Cav coming in on this side. Are they shooting at me? I wonder what, why is the music playing? I've got some battle music playing and I don't know why. General's gonna try to try to just hang out and be safe. But let's see, Spanish Unites, maybe get a little javelin toss in. I mean, these guys are just gonna get absolutely wrecked by. Let's see, can we get a little javelin toss in? Or do I need them to retreat? Oh yeah, they might just stand there and take it. Always, always fine with me. Hey, that's what I like to see. <laughs> nice. Nice, yeah, that's doing a lot of damage to them. That's doing a lot of damage to them. Let's bring them back. Put them back on skirmish mode, just in case they get charged while I'm not looking. And then, let's see, my our blasters are shooting. So that's good. Looks like my trickle plays are also shooting, but we're getting a charge on this side, it looks like. So let's bring my chivalric knights up to get a charge here, and then... Yeah, we'll just charge in there, because I don't want... Let's see... Let's charge downhill. You guys can skirmish back. Maybe I didn't have you on skirmish. That's my bad. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So you guys come in here. You come in as well. Pikes come in. And do I have any more cav on this side? No, I do not. So culverns, shoot at the skirmish cav right now. And have my skirmish cav turn around. We're going to clean up on this side. And are we getting a fight in here yet? Yeah, looks like we did get a charge. So let's get my guys coming in as well. And then Genetes, come around and yeah, just... Actually, hmm. Genetes, I might want you just to chase off... The the, uh, the Mamluk Horse Archers, but maybe not. Maybe just kind of toss your Javelins in here. That can also be a good idea. Maybe bring my General up and... How are things going? Like, are we okay? Are we going to be okay here? Let's bring my Arblusters, get them in a better position to fire. And looks like we are going to clean up the Militia Sergeants on this side. Took a plays, let's see, not great. Some of my Feudal Knights are fighting Spears, which is not ideal. Oh, you guys can actually come down here and fight these Feudal Sergeants. And Took a plays, actually just screen out the, uh... Screen out these... Here, yeah, you chase the Faris. And Took a plays, screen out... I'm pretty sure they'll lose in hand hand combat against the Mamluks. So we will just have to use them to screen out the cav on this side. Looks like we are cleaning up on this side as well. Is there anyone left? Barely. So let's use my genitase to chase down archers. That's going to be a good use for them. 
That's looking good. And yeah, we are, we are taking some hits for sure. Let's get my pikes to come up here and help out. And yeah, there's this is the enemy general right there, that unit of Gulan bodyguards. Let's bring Pavis Arblusters up and let's see, Culverins, make, make sure that you're shooting. Let's see, you're out of ammunition? Okay, that's fine. I'll have you withdraw. And are you out of ammo? You're, you're still shooting. So let's shoot at these Faris up here. And that's all looking good. All right, so Pikes, pressure. Put some pressure here. You Pikes, come help out. Actually, fight, fight against the general there. And let's see, Chivalric. Yeah, I don't like them fighting sergeants, but honestly, yeah, Pikes come up here and try to help out against those sergeants. And looks like the general is running away now. Perfect. So let's get my... Skirmish cap chasing down their foot skirmishers and Yeah, that went okay. I think I mean we definitely took some hit, take some hits, but uh All things considered. I mean it was a decent army from the enemy, so We just have to push them off now Which is gonna be a little bit annoying because they do have some skirmish cap that are sitting around But as long as we take it slowly make sure we push off the infantry first and then we can focus our forces on taking out their skirmish cav once all of the uh, the foot based units are gone this is a good opportunity for me. We got some Mamluks fighting my Genetes. And if we can come in here and crush the one unit with my generals coming in, yeah, that's going to be really good for us. And they want to send their other unit in as well. Yeah, let's go. Let's go fight them there. And we can leave my Turco place, continue chasing down Arbalusters. And we can try to support support this fight. I wonder if my Genetes are going to hang on. There's only 14 left. So yeah, it's going to be a tough fight for them. But like I said, I got my Chivalric Knights coming in to support. Genetes, just hang on. Come on, guys. You're doing great. You're doing wonderful. There's only 11 left. Knights coming in for a supporting charge. Come on, break these Mamluks. Yeah, Mamluks are good, man. They're, they have decent stats for sure. Down to nine genitals, and yeah, man, these guys eight. They are still hanging on. Holy moly. Yeah, the Mamluks finally, finally have met their match up against my chivalric knights in melee combat. That's not going to be a good fight for them. In fact, I. Tempted to kind of send my Turco players to come down here and make sure we finish this off. And that's going to be it. The Faris tried to put up a last stand, but now they will be driven off and then Sinai will be mine. And we will have to see how many of them survive to make it back into the castle because I actually didn't really think about that. I didn't, I don't think I, yeah, 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 I have my artillery right here. So my artillery could potentially get me into that castle. My poor genitals that took a beating. There's only two left. They they fought almost to the last man. They 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 put up. They did me proud. They sure did. So, yeah, we'll have to see what what it's gonna take to get into this castle and officially claim the region for myself. Killed 533 men. Lost 254. Yeah, that's a bloody one, but it had to be done. So, what is it gonna take to get into this castle? Algeria lost. Yes, perfect. Bandits in Wessex. Awesome. Wales. Love to hear it. Tunisia. Yep. Wales. And I did lose a cog in the Costa Verde. It looks like I don't have any boats there. Ooh, that's going to hurt my income. And one more turn before the the uh, the garrison in Saranasia falls to my soldiers. Yes, so the Egyptians and myself are allies again. Perfect. That's what I wanted to see. Lovely, lovely stuff. And the Golden Horde, the Mongols have also accepted my offer. Oh, perfect. Yes, but the Italians still, they have one province left and they still won't let me marry their princesses. No, come on. You're going to die to the Mongols. May as well let your family live on, you know, in another name. But yeah, let you save your daughters. Come on. Oh dear. Um, I'm definitely gonna choose the Mongol or the yeah the Mongols over the Italians. Yes. Do you wish to remain allied to the Golden Horde? Yes, I do. Sorry, Italians, but you're really not doing me any favors right now, and I'm making a lot of money off the Mongols, so that's how it goes. That is how it goes. Yeah, no mercies for Don Ramundo Enriquez. So yeah, this is a, exactly what I was talking about. He shows no mercy and has killed many prisoners, but is possibly too eager to do so, which deprives his men of their share of the ransom. Plus two dread, minus one morale. At that point, it's not worth it. 
I don't want to use him as a general anymore because of that. Yeah. Alright, let's check this out. So what do we got for economy? We're down to about 6,000. So yeah, we're losing some money by losing these territories, but that's, again, it's fine. And yeah, so this is going to last six turns if I just kind of let it siege out. But if I let the Egyptians handle it, that would be preferable because yeah, now, now that we're allies, Let's give this a test, eh? So, like, let's actually withdraw my forces from Cyrenasia. Um, actually, no. Let's let's hang on to this. Let's just get rid of this garrison. Yeah, we'll get rid of this garrison for the Egyptians. Uh, not not in Sinai though. That's that's going to be a bloody one. Castle attack. Uh, no, I don't want to do it. And there's no port here, so I just I just attacked Sinai to you know make it so that. The Egyptians might have an easier time. That's that's really it. So now what I can do is I can start rolling my forces up here. Yeah, go rebel, please. And I can bring I can bring my forces back to Antioch. And from there we can kind of consolidate, you know, my armies in the Levant and actually go after Syria to try to take this roadblock out of the Egyptians' territories. And maybe they will be able to reunite their northern territories to their southern territories, and that would be a that would be a win for for them for sure, but hopefully for me as well. And we can also withdraw from Constantinople. Very high, twenty nine percent loyalty, so they should go rebel. And hopefully, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, the Mongols do not attack before that goes rebel. Hopefully, the Egyptians do not attack before this goes. Or it should. Like, it's my territory, but there's rubble still in the garrison, so that's going to go immediately, right? Like, that's not going to be... Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder what's going to happen if the Egyptians did attack in this turn. I don't know if that would count as attacking my territories. I think it does. I think it does. Yeah, that's actually really... I, I don't know. I, I don't know about that one, because the garrison's going to take this over immediately. It's not like with an uprising where... It shows up and then it takes it the next turn. In this case, this garrison's already here. You know, they already exist essentially. So it's going to happen immediately. So I don't know how that would work if the Egyptians do attack Sinai right now. But fingers crossed that they do not do that. Well, I am moving my forces up the coast to consolidate here in Tripoli. In the meantime, I do, I did, oh, I mean, I do have some armies. Hanging out in Valencia, these are my fully formed armies that I have gotten from retraining units, and I decided to send a couple of these stacks up to Finland because what am I waiting for, you know? I know down here in Flanders and uh, Friesland, for example, I'm not too keen on dealing with these rebels yet because I don't have an alliance yet with the Swiss or the Germans, so I could potentially, you know, end up at war with them. That's not what I want. However, if I'm going down the map, right, so like Pomerania, they border uh the germans so no to them but prussia prussia borders the my, my friends the egyptians and the mongols so perhaps i could go there uh livonia doesn't have a port so not too keen on going there but then finland what do they border my new friends the mongols and they have a port so let's go in here let's take it from them there's only archers mostly just archers they do have a three-star general, but then I brought in my seven-star, just badass, Lord Ansuras, my captain general. Not only that, he's also brave beyond belief. Plus three valor, plus three morale. This is going to be a, a pretty easy fight up here in Finland, I think. I will be leaving my artillery out of the battle in this case because I will be going up against mostly infantry in this battle. There is a 17-man unit of cav, but I'm not too worried about them. It's just the eight unit of archers. That's right, eight units of archers. Holy God. So I will be bringing quite a few uh, cavalry myself to deal with that. But I do have a decently, you know, well-balanced army. I do some infantry as well. Some light calves, heavy calves, all that fun stuff, including my badass lancers. Yeah, my lancers will be... I feel like I haven't been able... <laughs> I was building up to them for so long, and then, then like, France died. And I was like, oh, well, it's, I, I, what's the point in having lancers now? But here we go. We get to see them in action. Let's go. Looks like they actually are pushing up on me. That's an interesting tactic, considering how devastating my army is going to be when they get in close quarters. 
Now I did choose for whether I chose calm with rain predicted later and you might think oh my god what am I what am I doing bringing rain I I have guns on my army well yeah but my army is not going to be relying on its guns to win me this battle however all they have is archers pretty much and they're very much going to be in some issues having some issues um if it starts raining you know they're gonna not gonna be able to do any damage to me whereas I'm gonna just be able to charge them down looks like they did bring their step cav right up close to my arm blasters and yeah they might want to get like kind of close to me but I'm just gonna pick them off and if they want to come right in I got my chivalric knights right here right behind my art blasters they can keep shooting just mowing these guys down yeah that looks so good and it looks like the my, rest of my army is just about gotten ready to go here so let's actually move up with my guns and I have a whole contingent of skirmish cav on this side Genetes and Turkopoles here. So let's move them up and support with my heavy cav. And yeah, step, step, step cav, you want to tangle with my chivalric knights? I mean, ugh, that's uh, not what they want to be doing. <laughs> that's, oh man, yeah, hide your children. That's uh, that's gonna be a bad, that's disgusting to watch right there. Let's see, handgunners in the forest. Okie doke. They can square off against my cavalry. And what do we have going on here? Guns shooting at archers? Yeah, that's always fun stuff. Is there anything that can stop my calf from just charging in? They do have some urban militia. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's about it. Let's just go in. Genetes chase down the Naptha here and chase down the archers. And then chase down the archers. Have my heavy calf move up just to support. Make sure that they're in the vicinity. Guns can shoot down their urban militia. That should be fine. And yeah, our blasters, like if you want to skirmish back, I'm fine with that. Like if you guys ever feel threatened, that's, you know, just go back. Just run away if you want to. My chivalric knights are chasing down their step cab. That's also fine with me. Yeah, they're getting a little bit close on this side, but hey, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. In fact, I can probably bring my infantry up here. Get a little charge in with my cav here. Genetes chase down archers here. Looks like, yeah, all of their archers are running away now. I could bring in these guys on this side. They have some arquebusiers. And, yeah, their melee units got a little bit out of position. But, honestly, I, my, my, my chivalric knights can just take care of these guys here. Move up with my center. And let's just charge down these hand gunners. Yeah, charge them down here and here. Even bring my general up. You can go here. And yeah. Our right, blusters, turn around. You can keep shooting at those urban militia. These guys are running away. Our right, blusters, you guys can move up as well. Support against these archers that are trying to run away in the forest. And that's looking like that's going to be a trickle plays. Yeah, you guys get involved as well. Tons of archers to run down here. And that's going to be the last of the rebels here in Finland. It looks like some of them will be getting away, but not too many. And I will be making sure that I do not execute the rebels in this case, because this is my really good badass general. And if he starts getting traits that give men negative morale, that'd make me sad. That'd make me a, a sad con. So let's avoid that. And let's see how long is it going to take us to get into the castle here in Finland. Oh, wonderful. So the Swiss have accepted my offer of alliance. Yes, that's that's really good news. And same with the Germans. Oh, perfect. Nice. That's that's really lovely. So down here, I actually did make a mistake. Yeah, damn. I completely forgot about that whole thing I was doing by attacking castles and trying to guarantee that I keep the port. That does seem to be a thing, doesn't it? It really does. Like, I know it doesn't guarantee that I keep the port by attacking the castles, but look at here. I sieged it out. I did not attack the fort here in Cyrenasia, and there is no port. So, that does seem to be a thing, doesn't it? And, shit, now that I think about it, I have to either A, go into Tunisia and use this port... <laughs> Or B, stay in Cyrenasia and build a port here before I can leave. I don't think I really want to stay here. I mean, it's only four turns. 
It's only four turns. Hmm. I mean, I could build a port for the Egyptians. <laughs> I mean, the fact that there's no fort here left means that they probably would not destroy it. Right? Because I think that forts often get destroyed when there's like a siege. I don't think, because if it's just rebels, I think they just kill the, like, the rebels and that, and that's it. Might be worth just building a fort here, or a port, not a fort. Port. And yeah, let's try to, you know, while I'm here, I may as well sign a governor. Make a whopping 79 florins off of Cyrenasia while I'm here, may as well. How, what am I at right now? Making 4,800. So yeah, my, my income is dropping, but again, I, I think that there's a long-term, a long-term plan here, which might work out. So let's move my forces from Tripoli and Palestine. And let's hope that these provinces go rebel before the Egyptians attack. I can even destroy this border fort and I can destroy this town guard as well. 28% loyalty. Yep. I like that. And same thing here. Destroy that and destroy this. 43% loyalty. Okay. And Finland would take nine turns for this to fall to a siege. Well, luckily, I will not be waiting that long. I did bring some artillery in this instance, and it is just a keep. Yeah, it's just a basic keep. I don't think there's any defensive upgrades for this keep, so that should be pretty easy to attack and to take. And hopefully, I do keep the port, and yeah, that should hopefully clear it out so the Mongols can take it. I did see the Mongols. Yeah, so they did take Livonia. Nice. Not that it really matters because there's no port here, but um, it might. Yeah, so this is not going to fall unless they actually attack it. So hopefully they can get that done. That's that's kind of rough. <laughs> this I don't know. That Mongol force might lose a lot just to this keep in the curtain wall. Yeah, that could be a tough little battle for them. And considering that there's no port here, that's... Yeah, hopefully they can make it work. I saw that they did attack down here. I haven't lost Constantinople yet. Oh, that's that make, that makes me nervous. That makes me nervous. Come on, rebels! Come on, rebels! Take it, <laughs> please take it. Like like even these guys, like they can. Well, shit, no, because that's kind of like too big. These armies are too big. <laughs> then I just have to go in there and do it again. Ah, uh, no, I don't want that. Hmm. I mean, I intend on attacking Nasi at some point anyway, but still, that defeats the whole purpose. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it during the end turn. I saw the Mongols attempt to attack Syria and Nicaea, but they decided to retreat from both of those battles. So they're trying. They're trying to get some stuff done, but the rebels are still too strong, and that just validates further what I'm trying to attempt here. Why does it look like the, pap the Pope's armies have gotten bigger? Oh, Popey, what you doing with these big old two stacks on my... That's four total stacks on my border. Hmm. I mean, they still don't have any boats in the water, so I guess I shouldn't be worried, but... Yeah, it's interesting that they have most of their power on my border and not, like, you know, bordering anything else. <laughs> like, they have some forces here bordering Egypt and the Mongols, but that's it. So, hmm. Let's get a bishop back in Hungary so I can continue spying on that province. All in all, though, I feel like things are going relatively okay, other than the, the mistake I made in forgetting to assault the castle here in Cyrenasia. But other than that, things look like they might be going okay here. I, I might be able to give back these provinces without, you know, ending up in a war. And being able to get those alliances with the Germans, the Swiss, the Mongols, and the Egyptians really does feel like it can really open some doors for me in being able to allow myself to take these rebel provinces and give them back essentially without 
uh, causing any issues for myself. So hopefully that continues in that uh, that vein going forward. But that is all going to have to wait until next time. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and thank you very much for watching. This has been Connoisseur playing Medieval Total War. Thank you very much and goodbye.